Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. In this video series, we're gonna learn how to create a dungeon that your players are gonna love to explore. Today, we're gonna talk about creating a trap. Now, so far, we have drawn the map, we have populated it with monsters, but we are missing traps. A good dungeon has traps, and we have decided that in the library we're gonna have a trap and we're gonna have a trap at the entrance. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question. What is a trap? Traps come in many shapes and forms. They can be like, I've mentioned it before, like in Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, when they walk into the room and the spikes are coming down. Traps can take many shapes and forms, but all of them share a certain kind of similarity. Now, I'm gonna write down the questions that make a good trap. First of all, is you have to ask yourself, what kind of damage does the trap deal? Well, if any, if any, well, is there acid? Is there cold damage? Is there fire to air damage? Uh, is there no damage at all? Does it set an alarm? Um, so, for my trap here, I'm gonna go with poison damage. Okay? So, in our case, we're gonna say A poison. The next question is what kind of condition does the trap set? And now, we have a poison damage trap, so it is logical to think, well, for a condition, we're gonna give it, not come here. We're gonna give it the poison condition. And depending on the game that you play and how you are a dungeon master, that will affect it. So, we know the trap in the library is going to uh, be uh, poison damage and gives the poison conditions. So for our third point, we have to ask ourselves, how is the trap triggered? Well, what kind of triggers do we have there? We have physical triggers. Let's say you touch the lock and there's a poison a eh, poison spike that comes out when you touch it that would be a physical trap then of course there's magical triggers and you know the sky is the limit when it comes to your imagination it could be if you know a male person walks into the room it sets off and then, of course there's a condition trigger what is a condition trigger condition triggers are for instance, if the party carries a certain item in the inventory, the trap goes off. That would be a condition trigger. Condition triggers can come in any shape or form. So for my purpose here, I'm gonna say it's a physical trigger. And once we have this all together, we're gonna design what kind of a trigger it is. Now, could be like, you know, a thin glass that breaks, could be a, you know, a dart, whatever, but it's gonna be some kind of physical trigger. Now, obviously, if your heroes are aware of traps or they are just plain out smart and searching is then we have to ask ourselves how can the trap be detected? I'm gonna say here the trap can be detected by physical or magical means. 
depending on your game you might have a search for a trap spell or you have a rogue that investigates but in either way it's a physical trap so they can be detected that way meaning you search for it and if you're careful you find it next question how many times can the trap go off if it's like a glass of poison gas and it breaks well that can only go off once but what if it's some kind of a shooting mechanism shooting they can go off many many times so for my purpose I'm gonna say it can only go off once it's not gonna shoot poison repeatedly it's not going to I uh, have a limited amount uh, amount like 10 times now I'm gonna say only once why because we're dealing with a first level group and unless you want to kill them outright let's stick with once the next thing is what is the traps visibility some traps are in plain sight they you walk in a room and say oh my gosh there's a trap others are hidden why would I say that the trap can be in plain sight because it encourages role a role playing it changes the group so uh, don't automatically say oh my god why would I make a trap you know hidden sometimes a visible trap leads to a much better game so don't discount you know visible traps so for our example I'm gonna say our trap is hidden next thing is how does the trap target its victims victim or victims now we can say it's gonna target an area we're gonna say it can you know target a condition we're gonna say it's fixed targeting like one direction one side that's like that's like your your um your floor trap that's a fixed targeting area it can't be it can't be moving of course there's all this magical triggering and my uh, uh, situation i'm gonna say it's gonna be an area targeting Now, we have covered the basics of the trap. So now we're gonna decide how lethal this trap is gonna be. Or let's uh, yeah, let's call it lethal. Yeah, lethal. Did I spell it right? Of course not. Now. If you are playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, then page 121 of the Dungeon Master's Guide will help, help you there. But any other game, then, you know, you have to figure out your own stuff. Since we are dealing, in my example, with a first level group, you do not want to go too hard. The average hit points in Dungeon Dragons 5th edition for a level 1 character is 7 hit points. So, in my situation, I'm going to say it does 2d4 poison damage. Only in absolute extreme cases, if I roll 2d4, this will kill the person. Otherwise, it will be 
a setback that's gonna stop someone think twice about investigating again in the future and be careful but it's not gonna outright kill them in 90% of the situation so now we have the overall things of the trap so let's let's talk about how we can put this into words. We say we have a poison trap and we are in the library. So, I'm gonna show you a super simple way to put these all together. I'm gonna say hidden behind the books, attached to a string Is a glass vial with poisonous gaps. So in other words, they go they go for their books. I guarantee you a library is too hard to resist for uh, for players not to investigate and the reason for that is because they're always greedy to find new spells and magical stuff so they're gonna go through it so if they are not careful this is perfect for the trap they pull the book out where the string is attached they're gonna shatter the glass and the poison gas is gonna be set off how can you disarm it well just be careful with it and that's it so a very simple trap that we have created here that makes a huge impact. And you decide how far the gas air goes. Does it fill out the whole room? Does it only hit the person there? You decide that at the moment. But here we have hidden behind the books attached to a string is glass. Well, 2d4 poison damage. and gives the poison condition. Now, since we're playing fifth edition here, I'm gonna say it, got, it takes a DC 10 investigation check if, if you're actively searching to find this trap. To disarm it. All you have to do is take the book out carefully, cut or rip through the string, and the poison gas cannot, you know, cannot explode. Bam. So very simple. Now we also have the tra uh, trap at the entrance. Now if you have paid very close attention, I'm gonna go to the very beginning of us, and I'm gonna write this underneath here. That's my entrance trap. I'm gonna say this is a buried spike trap. Now there's a reason for, me. Yeah, for that. Why? Because I'm going back to the logical thinking of the dungeon. Why is the entrance to the dun yeah, to the dungeon um, trapped? Because Let's just, uh, I'm going to give a background story here. A huntsman noticed that there is undead in there and he doesn't want others. So what he's going to do, he's going to bury a spike trap that anybody who walks up to the entrance steps into. It's going to do um, 1d6 piercing damage. Obviously, it can only go off once, and it gonna it's gonna take a DC ten to find DC ten investigation check to find the trap. The reason is the huntsman put that there. He didn't want the undead to go or uh, come out for some reason. And he doesn't want anybody to go in there. So it's actually something protective, but that was the way he solved it. You can disagree or dis uh, agree with him there, but that's how it was. And once they find the trap, they can step around it or they can disarm it, whatever they want to do. 
So, that was it for today. I really hoped that you liked the video. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, there's only one RPG Lord. I wish you a good day. And I see you in the next video. I try to publish uh, two videos a week. Wish me luck. The next video in the series is coming. I see you later.